Hey guys, we're joined here by Mike Weir to help break down the clubs in the golf bag. Because I know, Mike, mm -hmm. that I was way overwhelmed when I got my first set of clubs. So tell us a little bit more, like what's inside of our bag, why we have it, mm -hmm. and how can we use it on the course? Yeah, Jen, you're right. I mean, there's a, there's 14 clubs. I carry 14 clubs. That's kind of the max really? that you can use. You can't use 15 if you're playing a tournament. Oh. 14 is the max, but you can use as little as you want. Okay. But basically, you know, when you're when you're beginning this game, your driver, this is what you're teeing off with on most holes. So, would you think grab the biggest one, or does it have like a name on it? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of the biggest one. It's right. got the it's got the biggest club head on it. Okay. So this is what you're going to be teeing off on most holes now on par fives and par fours. Maybe on a par three, we're gonna use something a little bit shorter. Sure. Um, we're gonna use an iron there, but all the par fours and par fives, we're gonna be using this club. Perfect. So it's like good to know, kind of the biggest one is gonna make it go the furthest? Yeah, the furthest, exactly. Nice. It has has the least amount of loft. When we look at a club this way, uh -huh. it's pretty flat, you know? Yeah. As we get to, let's say, a nine iron. Sure. You can see when I when I put it this way, it has a lot more loft. The ball is going to go up in the air a lot more, so oh. that's going to go a lot shorter. Okay. So that's how that's loft. Oh, so loft. So when, when I have a five iron, it's a lot less loft. Mm. So you loft almost that. means go yes. up high. Yes. When, okay. it, when when you say I need more loft, that usually puts the ball a little bit higher in the air. Nice. And that's what we're going to use off the fairway. We're going to use. Um, these iron clubs off the off the fairway and okay. usually for your beginners you don't want to use anything more than like a seven iron you need that loft mm. we don't want to get into the six fives and fours those are really hard to hit even for pros so oh. we want to stick to like seven eights and nines and wedges just to advance the ball and get it closer to the green so we can you know get it around the green and, and score a little bit better i love that because honestly taking it for so now we're at the driver we're at the tee box we hit our, you know, we tee off, I guess you yep. would say. Yep. And then you have the fairway, okay? Yes. We hope that we have the fairway, not right. per se the rough. So right. if I were to, uh, you know, go to the fairway, um, depending on, let's just say a par four, mm -hmm. meaning I still have to go pretty far, right? Yeah. What would I grab? Well, here's the thing. If, if you're a bit more advanced player, uh -huh. you can use a lower lofted five iron or, or one of these rescue clubs. These are very popular these days. They're Oh, They're yeah. kind of a hybrid of rescue club. You can hit that if you're feeling good and, you, and you're kind of get a little more advanced in your game and you want to get it to the green. But beginning golfers, we're just trying to get contact. We're trying to see the ball in the air. So something like a seven iron or an eight iron okay. that has that loft, that gives us a little more assurance to get the ball in the air because this ball in the fairway, when we're teeing off, it's uh -huh. on a tee. So it's sitting up there, sitting up nice. Oh. When it's on the ground, it's in a little depression. The weight mm -hmm. of the ball makes the ball sit down in the grass. So we need to get down into the ball to get the ball uh, some loft to get it in the air. If we have like a five iron, it's really hard to get the ball in the air. Okay. So that's so, that's more advanced as we get along in the game. Right. So on the fairway, would it be typical like to say, you know, you would, you know, use a six? Because like sometimes in my head, I think opposite of what the numbers are. So like mm -hmm. a five would be something that would be closer to the green. So mm. what would you say for a fairway, uh, you know, you're in the fairway, uh, what would you typically use? Like Yeah, as, as we get closer to the hole, we're gonna keep using more and more loft. So okay. let's say for example, I'm 150 yards away, yeah. you might hit your seven iron and get it. it let's say it only went 100 yards. Now you're 50 yards from okay. the green. Now you're gonna use something, uh, one of your wedges. I carry a few different wedges. You might use something that has like this, it says SW on the bottom. Uh -huh. This is a 54 degree yeah. sand wedge. Oh. So this ball has a lot more loft. It's not gonna go as far, but it's gonna go higher. So it's gonna land on the green a little softer. Okay. So when we get closer, we wanna use more loft. So almost like the higher number of the that's on the iron. So let's yes. say eight or nine, it's gonna go higher. Higher and shorter. Perfect. That's and as we go seven, six, it's gonna go lower, lower and a little bit further. Further. Right. So lower the number, further. Right. And then higher the number. Higher, higher, higher and shorter. And more loft. And more loft, I love, exactly. Yeah, I'm learning all about the loft. Yes. This is perfect. So now we're right around the green. We're gonna probably pick what? 
there's a few choices. Yeah. I carry a few different wedges. Sure. In your bag right here, you have a 60 degree. Okay. You have a sand wedge and you have a pitching wedge. Any pitching three wedge. of those would work. They okay. all have a, quite a bit of loft. Okay. 60 degree, obviously 60 degrees of loft. Right. 54, 54 degrees loft, a little bit less. Yeah. So if I have a very short shot, I might use my 60 degree right. to get the ball up high to land very soft. Right. If I'm a little bit further, I might go to my 54. Okay. Comes out just slightly lower, still gonna be soft, but it, it, I can hit it just slightly further. So my bag came with a P, it's like yeah. for a pitching wedge, pitching right? Pitching wedge, yes. So I'm like pitching onto the green with you the can, pitching. You can use your pitching wedge. Okay, you can. perfect. So my P will kind of give me the same yes. loft as yours. Well, it has, your pitching wedge typically has, you know, about 46 or 47 degrees of loft. As we get in these sand wedges, my, my 54 degree sand wedge, you can see I've gone up from a pitching wedge with 46 or 47. Right. Or 48, now we're into 54 and then we're going to 60. So okay. the, the shot that you want to land over the sand or you want to get one yeah. softly over um, even water in front of the green right. or something. So we want to use maybe our sand wedge okay. to get it up higher. Pitching wedge still, if you're a little bit further, right. you can open up the face just a little bit. By that, I mean you just open it just a little bit and right. make the same swing. That adds a little bit of loft and it'll go up in the air. That's what we hope, Mike. That's, That's what, what we, we hope. hope for, right? So I'm around the green, I'm pitching on. Now yep. I'm on the green, Mike. What on do we green. What do we use? Putter. Okay. Mostly. Mostly. Unless you're really putting bad and you see some guys try something different, but no. So this would be my putter. putter. That's it. Okay, so it's more it's, flat. It's almost dead flat. It has, dead. it has a little bit of loft to it you know, two or three degrees, right. almost flat. The reason you have two or three degrees, because again, the ball's sitting on the green, it's sitting down a little bit. We need a little loft. When we make contact with the ball, the ball comes out of the depression and then starts running. If it was dead flat, the ball would skid a little bit and get offline quickly. Oh, I and mean, that's, we don't we want don't, that. We don't want that, so. <laughs> we want it to go in the hole. We want it to go in the hole. But yeah, so, so you're using your putter on the greens. Oh, always. perfect, okay. And around the greens. Yes. If you're just off the green and it's in a little bit longer grass, so this is uh, around the greens, so a green length is obviously much shorter than this, yeah. but this would be called fringe. Mm, this is called fringe. fringe, you hear that term fringe. Okay. So if the ball's sitting on this, and you have four or five feet and then the green starts. It's okay. a very nice, easy, safe play to putt this out of here right. and get it on the green. It's a great play for even pros, but for beginners especially, because right. chipping sometimes is hard. Mm, Putting the is. ball and just rolling the ball is, is much simpler. Yeah. So it's a good play when you're on the fringe, just off the green, you can use your putter. And that's when I just don't want to take the risk, Mike. You know? Exactly. I don't want to take the risk. I'm not feeling it exactly. for the day. Exactly. And, and I'm playing safe. Yep. I'll grab the putter totally. on the fringe. Totally, okay. exactly. That's it. You're exactly saying that right. Some days yeah. you just feel confident with your chipping. Other days, uh, no. not feeling so good. No. I'm going to take my putter and play the safe play and just roll it up there. Okay, yep. and then you get in the hole and you're done and you go do it again. And then you go to the next one. <laughs> Perfect, I love yep. this. For a beginner like myself, do I need to feel confident with every club in my bag? No, I don't think so, Jen. I think, you know, when you're beginning, you know, four or five clubs tops, I okay. would say, you know, trying to tee off with the driver, sure. you know, trying to get your driver good, okay. or maybe a three wood, even even a three wood might be good off the tee. Really? Feeling comfortable on the fairway with one club, you know, like I said, the seven iron. If you can hit a seven yeah. iron and make contact, move it forward, and it's something higher lofted around the greens, either your pitching wedge, sand wedge, or if you happen to have a 60 degree wedge, something you can just make a nice smooth swing mm. and plop it on the green. Yeah. So there's three clubs okay. and then your putter. That's really basically it. And then nice. as you get more proficient with that, you can start saying, oh, a seven iron, I can move on to the six because I want to get a little more distance. Right, now, that makes you know? so much sense. It's so, so helpful. Because I remember when we first started, it was like the seven was like my go-to. It mm -hmm. saved me through everything. Yeah. Anyways, and then I got more complicated. I was like, I want to go back to the seven. <laughs> it's like you can count on the seven. Yeah, that's you know? good. If you, if you can count on something, that's yeah. that's good. And then you can always work on the other ones as you go along. But kind of just getting proficient with a driver swing. Right. Because there is some different setup keys with the driver. The ball's on a tee, so we're actually swinging up on the driver. Okay. When the ball's sitting down on the ground, we want to swing, hit down on it a little bit more. So okay. just having those couple of keys mm -hmm. um, and just working, okay, I have this driver swing, I have this iron swing out of the fairway, I have a little swing to get the ball on the green, close to the green, yeah. and I have a putting stroke. Love it. Keep so we've got the tools. Keep it simple. That yes. is such a good thing to remember because so many, like I get a little bit more overcomplicated and then I just want to quit. But if yeah. you keep it simple, totally, then you can go and you can excel and be good at golf. That's right. Perhaps, you know? Perhaps, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perhaps. So Mike, mm -hmm. you know Michelle, right? I know her a little bit. <laughs> I always play with Michelle. She was the yep. one who kind of, 
really roped me into this. And sometimes she'll be out, you know, we'll be playing a hole and she'll grab her seven. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she's got a better, more trained swing than I do. So she can hit it farther. Now, what do I do? Do I grab the seven or how do I compare? The thing is, is like we're standing here on the driving range. When you just hit a couple balls, just kind of, you know, you don't have to be, be exact, but just see how far each club is flying. Yeah. And just because you're, Michelle's hitting a seven iron, you don't you don't need to hit that. You might okay. use a rescue club. Oh, okay. You know, it, it's not because your girlfriends are hitting a certain club that <laughs> you just pull the same club. Everybody's yeah. different. When I play on the tour, I might on a certain hole, a certain par three, be hitting a soft seven and mm. the, the guy I'm playing with might hit a hard nine. Okay. And it's just all all the, all the feel of the game. But um, just kind of knowing how you hit those few clubs, like we talked about, you got your driver, your seven iron, your lofted club, and how far you hit that, um, you know, it says it on the card. If it, right. whatever par three you come to, if it says 120 yards, you're like, oh, I hit mm. my seven iron. It looks like it's going about hundred yards. That's going to be pretty close. Nice. Let's use that seven. So yeah, so there's no pressure. I don't have to compare my swing no. to anybody else. Mm -mm. And I know the basics of what I can use, my tools in my bag, yep. and then I can develop from there. Totally. That's perfect. The best players are confident in their game. And as you get along and further along this game, knowing your game and being confident in your game, not what other anybody else is doing. Just do what you do and, and advance, and that's how you're gonna get better at this game. Not not wishing you hit it further with that certain club <laughs> and doing that. That stuff may come, yeah. but just knowing the, the level you're at right now yeah. and playing with that and, and trying to advance in the game a little bit. Okay. Okay, Jen. Okay. Anatomy of a golf club. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> this is the grip. Okay. So when you hear the term grip, this is a grip. There's tons of different grips out there. There's soft ones. This one has some cord in it for tackiness. Oh, um, that's important. This, yep, this is the shaft number of different shafts. Um, there's different steppings on, on the mm. shaft for the different stiffness and flex in the shaft. Wow. So this is the club base oh. and there's different spots on the face to hit it. We want to hit it out of the middle, mm -hmm. but this is off the toe. This is towards the heel, okay. which we don't want. When we hit it low on the face down here in these bottom two grooves, that's hitting it a little bit thin. Oh. When we hit it from the second groove to about the fifth groove there, that's the sweet spot. That's when you guys uh, say, I hit, I hit that out of the sweet spot. That's the feel that you, comes back in your hands. You're like, oh, that one felt good. Yeah. Usually when you hit it between the second and fifth groove, these little grooves that are in the in the club face, and when we make contact with the ball, mm -hmm. the ball hits these grooves, and that's what makes the ball spin. If there wasn't any grooves oh. on, the, on the club, the ball would knuckle all over the place. No. So the grooves control the spin of the ball. Wow. Um, so that's why we want to have our grooves clean. If they're filled with mud, the ball. Mine, mine, mine <laughs> yeah, and money. They kind of fly all over the place. We want to keep our grooves clean and hit them right out of the sweet spot, right out of the middle. Love it. Look at that. I hit that, you know, right in. So is that going to have more spin it's then? It's going to have a lot more spin. Oh my gosh. A lot more spin. This is so helpful. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. So, I, wow. Yeah, we have the toe, you know, we have the toe shot. Mm -hmm. And we have the heel. We want to, if anything, we want to air towards the toe a little bit. Right. The heel is not the spot we want to be, but um, to, when you're talking about spin, it's just getting it on that second to the fifth groove there. Because you're like literally like hitting it and spinning it. Spinning it. And then yep. it doesn't roll past the hole and you don't get emotional. It goes <laughs> maybe in the hole. Maybe. Okay. Sometimes it does. I love this. Perfect. I'm ready to go now and utilize the club. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go.